So the, this tank armor is made of uh, a special kind of steel. So regular steel is just made of iron as well as uh, in combination with carbon. But the thing is uh, ordinary steel is not uh, sufficient enough to protect the crew inside the tank against uh, projectile penetration. What happened is uh, this, uh, the steel of this tank is made of a couple of uh, special steel alloy, namely nickel, chromium, molybdenum, as well as manganese. But the thing is, during World War II, there's a shortage of manganese in uh, the United States. That's why instead of using manganese, they use molybdenum. Basically, what's the use of all of this alloy? Okay, adding uh, nickel to the steel improves the hardenability as well as the hardness of this steel. The chromium also adds uh, hardenability as well as the uh, improves the hardness of the steel. Molybdenum, on the other hand, improves the tensile strength of this uh, of the steel. So what happens is uh, when a projectile is strike this armor. The extra hardness provided by the by the nickel and chromium allows this steel to resist armor penetration. Molybdenum, on the other hand, improves the tensile strength of this uh, steel plate that allows it to withstand the stresses that is caused by projectile strike to the armor. So, in short, the combination of the nickel, chromium, as well as molybdenum make this armor resistance to armor penetration as well as uh, being able to absorb the stresses that is caused by projectile strike. Okay, so now we know that uh, this armor consists of uh, nickel, a mixture of nickel, chromium as well as molybdenum. So where are all this, uh, this all came from? So what happened is uh, nickel is uh, basically sourced out from uh, Canada. So Canada supplied the United States with nickel, chromium came from Alaska, it's mined in Alaska, molybdenum is mined in uh, Arizona. So, so those were the places where the different alloy of this steel came from.